This isn't an old wives' tale, it's true. It was in all the newspapers at the time. Young girl dieting dies. It's a sad thing, isn't it, that in this land of plenty, people can't control their food intake. Millions, I mean literally millions of people, most of them children, die every year uh, from hunger. And in other parts of the world, they can't even take care of their people. They don't have the know-how, the, the technology, the skill. You know, that's not it. We learned about it after it happened. 15,000 a day, mostly children. Can you imagine watching your baby die? I can. To see you shrivel up before your very eyes. Too weak to cry, her eyes pleading for food. Some of her bodies swell up, riddled with worms. We are blinded to this terrible fact because we live in a land of abundance and we cannot see the starvation. The fact is, there are poor, right here in America, who don't get nearly enough to eat. Many of them are way down at the starvation level. I remember uh, Murrow on uh, Harvest of Shame on TV about the migrants, but things haven't changed much. He said, uh, this isn't Johannesburg or Cape Town, but, well, in Mississippi, there are plenty who are way down at the starvation level. There are plenty of Indians and Spanish-speaking Americans. Of course, the thing is that you, you don't see them in our neighborhoods, and of course they don't get much press coverage. You know, I have heard that, uh, that Gerald Ford and Butts are going to start knocking some people off the food stamp rolls. Well, now I ask you, is this the time for that? And the rest of the poor people, they don't eat right either. They don't know how. They'll spend on liquor, or they'll go down and they'll buy sweets or potato chips, or they'll go to the drive-in for a hamburger or something before they'll even put out a square meal for the kids. I'm, you can't say that. Look, I'm, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm, I'm just saying that I think it's uh, a lack of knowledge. I think it's a lack of education. Uh, it's poor training. No money. It's, well, all right, together with no money, but I... But most of us have more than enough. Our cupboards, shelves, Refrigerators are overflowing with food. Even the dog eats like a king. It's shameful. The magazine ads are always pushing us towards the wrong choices. The women's magazines. On one page, they'll have a pie ad. Serve your family this scrumptious pie this evening. And on the next page, they'll have a diet plan. 650 calories a day guaranteed to make you lose. I saw one at the check stand with a banana cream pie pictured on the cover and an advertisement for a permanent weight loss diet inside. I could tell them about permanent weight loss. If the people in India could get in the minds of some of these people that think these things up, there'd go their nonviolence, I'm sure. But it isn't the magazines that make us waste and keep people starving. They have their say in it. And the fashion magazines, too. Mm -hmm. Anyway, she must have been skipping school meals regularly and frankly lying about it. And at dinner time, she was always so busy. She used to run down and join us and have a few bites and then run right back up to her room. So many youngsters are like this. We didn't watch her very closely then. I never thought, well, she did lose weight, and we complimented her, of course. She showed no loss of energy, and she seemed, she seemed so energetic. She rose early and seemed almost overly interested, you might say, in physical activity. We were afraid she'd wear herself out or, or become mannish. I thought then that she was right, though, in saying she'd feel better if she were thinner. I know models and women jockeys have to skip meals. Every goal in life involves some sacrifice. Just being a wife and mother means a thousand daily sacrifices, worth it in the long run. But still, there they are. Some have one idea. Others have another idea about how much you have to give up to play your proper part. We don't know what such girls think about, really. About the tiny little binges they allow themselves, feel driven to, and then they punish themselves. 
the way every little bite looms large and every excess must be paid for. To think how others struggle for an extra morsel every day of their lives while thousands of girls like her. <sighs> she confessed finally that she even tried to walk and move in ways that put more stress on the body, made it work harder to use up more calories, burn up more energy. Starving people often do not have the energy to get up. We learned later that she stopped losing after her, her initial losses and got panicking. So she cut down even more, almost to nothing. She told the doctor she subsisted on a hard-boiled egg and some lettuce every day and threw away anything else that she was given. We became concerned when she began to look gaunt. So if she couldn't avoid our watchful eyes, then she eats some, and, and then she says, go to the bathroom and make herself throw up. Now this to me is self-punishment, sticking your finger down your throat. Doctors don't even know. Some say that it's... When boys go berserk, all they do is take an axe or a shotgun to their family. The girls are made to take it out more on themselves. Some doctors say that it's a way of denying womanhood, but I don't buy that. An ideal woman is a thin woman. Curves are no curves. And they say the same thing about being overweight. They're burying the curves. It seems that some men will say anything against a woman who tries to... <laughs> no. It was some misplaced idea on her part. She just wanted to be the best woman that she could be, in whatever way she could be, in order to, to please other people. Twiggy's still a woman, isn't she? <laughs> some man's idea of an overgrown child. I say there's too much pressure on a girl to be thin. I've had to do a lot of thinking lately, and uh, I, I just can't think where we went wrong. I guess uh, deep down inside, I believe that, uh, well, that we must be responsible. She lived out there in the same world that we do. And not all her ideas by any means came from us. A person has only so much control and no more over what these kids pick up. Wish did she feel guilty about eating or about being above worry? Well, I know she was upset about Biafra and about Bangladesh. She told me later, uh, near the end, that she was becoming afraid to eat because she was afraid that if she started again, she wouldn't be able to stop. I read a story once about two little boys starving somewhere who broke into a uh, storehouse where wild rice was kept. Their country was having a famine, and this seemed to mean that the poor could no longer afford to buy the stockpiled rice, and people were dying. Well, anyway, these two little boys, they stuffed themselves with the grain, and of course their bellies swelled with it. Wild rice uh, swells to about two and a half times its dry volume, I believe. And their little stomachs burst, and they died. What kind of policy is it that keeps food from the starving? Some people say that food is a weapon, a political weapon. Well, the rich get rich and the poor starve. The rich countries are eating the bananas and, and coffee grown in the poor countries where people are starving. Earl Butts told Time magazine that food is a weapon and that it is now one of the basic tools in the negotiating process. <laughs> 